few vlogs ago, I mentioned uh, checking out a, a local car meet, sort of a show and shine, unofficial car show type thing. Well, today, we finally have some time. Uh, I believe two of my brothers are gonna come as well, Dakota and Ken, if they have some time. Uh, Rob should be here, uh, maybe Armando as well. So, uh, I guess you'll see some familiar faces. Oh wow, there's a lot of cars today. This is probably, this is probably the fullest I've ever seen it, including this cool, I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and it'll be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift Oh! I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Y'all, so do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've got my own issues, I need a comb to get through Don't need to groan with you, just go get your own tissue I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign that's it, the end of the song Next time you'll sing along Trust me, there's nothing wrong I just need to carry on Cause society's a myth Put there to make you sit Listen to what they give Don't ask questions, shut your lid Yeah, don't ask questions, shut your lid I need to run away from this And go get off the grid Feel like my brain is overloaded, man I'm losing it Don't let them tell you what to do, man They don't know shit that was funny. I was just tell him, I go, the last time the song was when he had the reaction of your face on his bed, just, oh, my stomach, my stomach. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then he'd, get, he'd just get almost calmed down, look back up, and he'd go, ah! <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect reaction. That was awesome. Wait, you are trying to compare him to Mo? <laughs> Mo. Oh, oh the from the Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. He's not that the bartender. So no, but I mean, Mo has that. <laughs> well, they all do. Yeah. <laughs> and so did you. Yeah, I did. That's why I made that little Simpson character of myself. It was perfect. Yeah. It was so good. It was absolutely hilarious. <clears throat> Dreams. I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be. I work like I got vision, I don't need to see. I'm picking mind over matter, I believe in me. I need to find more hours in the day to breathe. Need to find more power in the way I be. And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes, I need to scream out loud, I can't stop me. I want to be the greatest like Rocky. You know I leave them all hate like a hobby. I'm out here making moves like a lobby. And if you ain't with me, it's you lost. I got my mind on the facts, I'm a python. Grab what I like real fast, choke until I have everything I attack. Everything that I lack, everything that I want, and I see matter of fact. Cause I'm my own worst enemy. Only if I let it be I can control anything if I can just think carefully I can 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Everything I do, I do the best. And deep within my mind, you know I'll always be the best. you bring the, the crew cab? I didn't drive it today and I haven't been home since. So oh. I can go get it. Go get it. Yeah, yeah go get it. Alright. <laughs> Why are you giving everybody hats? <laughs> <laughs> We're all getting shit. No, it's cool. He, huh? What year is that one? That's a 95. That's the one with the 700,000 kilometers. That's a 95? Yeah. I need a 98. What? Why? Because I met my wife in a 98. Those are ugly though. Oh, no different than that. So hot. Was it a lightning? No, it wouldn't have been. It just looks like that, but blue. What? It looked like that? No, last year was a 97. He's going to get the other one? Yeah, he's going to go get the 97 crew guy. Is that the uh, 6? No, that's not a 6 in that one. No, that's a 5.8. So the V8. So that's a 3.1. Yes. It's a diesel. There he is. I guess you can't park beside me, but uh, I don't know, maybe park over there.
notice that we have the same tires? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no oh, yeah. Shit. Just mine are way bigger. Goodyear. Is this Goodyear? I don't know. I guess so. I guess so. All right, guys. So that's that's this little car meet. Um, no, yours are totally different. Are they? Yeah. There's oh. a tr Centennial Trail Hog. Runs a good year Wrangler. Okay. Well, they they have a very similar yeah. tread. Huh. Okay, they're not the same. Almost the same. They're not the same tire. But check it out. My brother Ken has almost the same truck as me. Was it inspired by my truck for you to get this truck? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Why not? Because uh, I've always had these four trucks and I need a diesel. You've never, work. you've never had a crew cab though. No, but I need it for work. So. How many of these do you have? Uh, seven. Seven. And the red one from earlier? Well, two crew cabs, but seven trucks. Yeah. You have two crew cabs? No, I'm sorry. The other one's a super cab, two diesels, yeah. Two diesels, okay. How many kilometers does the red one have that you were just here with earlier? 722,500 roughly. How many miles is that? Uh, almost 449,000. Yeah, so for those of you who said getting these trucks was a waste of money because it's gonna be in the graveyard soon. <laughs> Not so. No. How many kilometers does this one have? Uh, kilometers about 270. That's low for a diesel. Yeah, yeah. I forget how many well, mine has, for but a truck that old. yeah. But what year is this? Uh, ninety-four and a half. I, all right, ninety-four and a half. Mine's a ninety-six, 96. and there are some subtle differences. So, one of the differences that I know. Oh, you can't see it on these ones. Yeah, because the chrome package. Okay, but there, there's a little divot here Actually, on mine, yeah. but it's not on yours. But you can't even see it. What else is different? Besides this being a diesel, but just body style wise. Uh, okay, so your interior dome light, you have two of them and they're a different style. Whereas this originally came with one, it's in the middle only, so. Okay, one there. This where... headliner is from a 96, so as you'll see there's a hole back there, but there's no oh, yeah. light because there's nothing, there's no wire or anything. For right. It. Do you mind telling the folks why you have a new headliner in there? Uh, cause I bought this truck with, uh, it had an interior fire. I, I should tell the story of how I got this truck. Okay. So it was posted on Facebook in St. George, Utah. And I contacted them right away and it was some girl who was selling the truck for her parents. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. I arranged yeah. to buy the truck. Like I had a, it was going to come on Friday. I took the day off work. I borrowed a friend's truck cause I couldn't tow it with my own pickup. So I, I went and traded trucks with my friend. I drove a total of three hours to get to a trailer rental place, rented the trailer, and I'm sitting there ready to sign the paperwork for the trailer when the girl calls or texts me and says, hey, my parents decided not to sell the truck, sorry. And I was like, what? I mean, yeah. I was on the way there, you know? And it's far away. Yeah, this is like a six hour drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of halfway there already. So now I, I tried to call her back and I tried texting her. She, she wouldn't answer my calls, she wouldn't answer my texts. I go on Facebook, she blocked me, even though I hadn't messaged her on Facebook. So then I was kind of pissed. So I thought, you know, they probably sold the truck to somebody else who offered them more money or something. So I thought, I'm gonna find this this house where this truck was, and I'm gonna go knock on the door when I'm driving by in a couple of weeks, and I'm gonna tell her parents what I think of her. <laughs> so I use Google Earth. And I probably spent about six hours on Google Earth and told, combing St. George, looking at the photographs that I had saved from the ad and the satellite images, and systematically going like parcel by parcel of this entire city until I found this truck. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. And so then I drove there like two weeks later when I was heading to Canada anyway, stopped in and there's this truck it's still sitting there. And I'm like, oh, no way. So I knock on the door and the, the mom answers and I asked her, I said, I said hey, uh, I was going to buy this truck a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was wondering if it's still for sale. And she's kind of taken aback. She's like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, if you're still willing to sell it, I'd still like to buy it. So we chatted some and uh, yeah, I ended up buying it. And then she, she did ask me after we were signing the paperwork. She's like, 
So how'd you find this this place? <laughs> You're a spy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should have thought of like some new Liam Neeson line. Right. right. Yeah. I told you I would find you. Done. Anyway, yeah, that was basically it. So I, I bought the truck and had it shipped to LA as I continued north. And then uh, six months later, when I went back, then there it was waiting for me. So I, it had an interior fire, and uh, I basically had to replace the entire interior in it, plus do a bunch of other work. And there's uh, still more work because that yeah. fire was more than just a fire. If you guys look here, oh, yeah. uh, you can, it's kind of hard to see, but like it's very obvious at certain Here's angles. With this. Yeah, there was an explosion. Looks like another bomb went off right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a propane cylinder or something exploded inside and then set it on fire. Yeah, and it bowed the doors outward. Somehow, it, yeah, both the front doors especially are bent out and I straightened them, I bent them back, but this, the top of this door was like out here. Oh yeah, so you need a couple more things for this truck. And then, uh, I guess she'll be done. I don't know. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect because it's a work truck, so I don't want to make it mint because then I won't want to use it. What, el what else is different about the 94s versus... Uh, I have rancher-style mirrors, whereas you have... Yeah, that's not a year difference, though. I know, that's just an option. Uh, not much else that I can think of because 94 was when they started getting... Like, you're 96... You can get all the same options in 94, basically, so. Well, this one is a standard, though. Yeah. As you can see. And it's also, hey, mine is also missing, <laughs> the thing. Uh, wasn't it there originally? Y yeah, sorry, mine's broken. Oh, okay. I did put it back on, but, oh. yeah. Wait, so you don't want to make this nice because you don't want to not drive it for work? <laughs> I don't want to make it too nice. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because then I'm not going to want to use it for work, right? Mm. Every time it gets a scratch on it, I'm going to be mad. If it's mint. You know? I know. I know the feeling. Okay. So. Oh, we both have this as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same checker plate. You know, if cool. anything, it would be you who was inspired by me and my Ford trucks, you know. I, I was actually the first one to have a white vehicle in this family, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Got him! Ah, I can't see that. What do you mean, Greg? Ah! Oh, point 12. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't do that great. He doesn't have a supercharger on there. And then. Uh -huh. I think Dave bought a white truck and mom bought a white car. Uh -huh. Mike bought a white Chevy truck. Everybody started getting white vehicles all of a sudden. I had the white Lightning first. Well, I actually wanted a black one, but white is actually really cool. Like the Lightnings, when I eventually get a Lightning, I would really like a white Lightning. I think that's a song. Ooh, yeah, black. but it's referring to alcohol, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Moonshine? George Jones. <laughs> yeah. Shh. What lightning? Well, maybe you can buy the lightning from Dave next. I already asked him. Well, he's still considering selling it. Mm hmm. So, so guys, for those of you who don't know, the lightning is like the fast version of these trucks, the single cab short box, but it's a special edition by SVT, and they are sick. So, ever since Coda and I were young, I've wanted one of these. I've wanted the Fox Body Mustang because of the magazines they used to buy, the, uh, yeah, yeah. what was it? Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, because they were all like nose in the air off the line. Yeah, I yeah. thought they just did that. <laughs> I thought that was just, factory, yeah. Just, yeah. And so I was like, that's my dream car. And obviously once I got it, I knew that wasn't the case, but so I have one of those. And then these trucks have been like my dream trucks. Yeah. So then I finally got that and now I want a brick nose, which I actually had first before this from Dave. Dave, our brother Dave gave me his oh, right, yeah. brick nose, but it, I don't really like the brick nose. I always wanted one of these or the bull nose. And, uh, but now I want a brick nose dually diesel standard with the light package and stuff. And 
But anyways, I want a bunch of trucks, so. <laughs> yeah, better get back to work. Yeah. Make your headaches go away. Uh. Yeah, which I actually have some good news to share with you guys regarding my brain health. Um, so remember when this first started, um, the theories we were given were not great. Uh, brain tumor, brain aneurysm, or hopefully it was nothing worse than a bad tension headache. Well, we know it's not a tension headache because after two and a half months of one single long constant bad headache, it that doesn't make any sense. So that is ruled out. The last update I shared with you guys regarding the results of my MRI, uh, we found out that I do not have a brain tumor. So that was great. Uh, well, with the angiogram, I just got those results back not too long ago, and I do not have a brain aneurysm, which was the uh, predominant uh, theory. So that's good. The bad news is we still don't know what the heck is wrong and what's creating these lesions on my noodle. Um, we just don't, well, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at, but it, it seems that I'm just uh, a bit of an anomaly. I do have some upcoming appointments to see the neurologist again. Maybe there will be some new things we can try. I do believe he's going to be able to clear me to do Cairo in case it's a nerve thing. We were just waiting for the angiogram results to make sure there wasn't like a brain bleed risk or rupture or whatever. So even though it isn't a strong theory based off of uh, no related pain, we're going to do Cairo and related stuff just in case it is a nerve thing because I want to get rid of these headaches. And if it's that, then that would be great and easy to solve, hopefully. I will keep you guys updated. All right, well, I've got two cars later. Oh, you do? Yeah. This is a 97? Uh, this one is a 94 and a half. This mine's is 96. Yeah, mine's a 96. Both are mine are 95. 95s? Oh yeah, he's got two 95s, right? Are, are they crew cab? Uh, one crew cab and one uh, super cab. Oh yeah? yeah. Cool. Long or short bed? Okay. Long box too, yeah. Cool. Are you from here? Yep. Two miles south here. Okay. What color are they? Uh, <clears throat> red one is super cab and uh, crew cab is two-tone blue. Okay. Oh, nice. I saw your super cab here, I think. Oh, I'm here pretty often, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. I actually took a picture of it is and sent right? it to you. And I was like, here's a clean super oh, cab. really? Is that that one? I think so. I mean, I and what color is your crew cab? Uh, blue and white. Uh, two blue. But I haven't drilled that for a while. Okay, I don't know if I've seen that one. Every time I see one, I'm like, dude, yeah. sick. There's another one. I always wave at everyone who has one. There's not very many crew cabs around. No, You're leaving? No, yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah. All right, see you, dude. I got Thanks for coming. Yeah. See you later, Cap. Is it... Okay, see you later, Jacoya. Is it this one? <laughs> Super cab long bed? Mm, looks like it is. See? I told you. You gotta do burnout. Yeah, yeah, do a burnout. Without crashing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't hit anything. Don't hit my little truck. Gerard? <laughs> yeah. I'm Ken. Ken? Nice to meet you. I'm Josh. Josh? Josh? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Dylan believes that I got two trucks like yours. Right? <laughs> I believed you. I believed you. But you drive this. I brought it home like uh, five, six years ago, I guess, from Saskatchewan. Okay. It was just a, the box in the cab, and the motor was, all the motor was in it, but there was just only a, like a flat 8 V8, no transmission, and most of the motor was missing, the heads were off. Oh, okay. So I took a Ford Ranger and I put it on a Ford Ranger. Oh, really? Oh, it fits well, huh? Yeah, it's a little V6. That's, that's nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Compact. Yeah. Dude, that's cramped in there. Huh. Yeah. The was missing, so I just welded in all these little bars. Okay, yeah. But, uh, I can't get the drill on it. I realized after that you can't get the drill, so I left all the bolt holes there. So if I want it, I can bolt the, the original drill right back over. Sure, yeah. The like, drill is like $600 or something. Okay. So for now, I'll leave it. Quick like bumper, right? Yeah. It's got a little bend in it. Here somewhere, I should have straightened it out. In the back, there was no bumper in the back, so I took it off some other old car and made it fit. <laughs> Okay. And then the super cab, well, I bought a super cab Ranger and I should have bought a, that wasn't a super cab, the uh, frame was too long. Oh, yeah. So I had to add eight inches in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. 
so I made it into a long box. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Because I didn't want to cut and all the fuel tanks in the road, the brake line, and, yeah, and I'm not a mechanic, so, yeah. so I made the box a little longer to make it fit. <laughs> there you go. So how long is it inside now? Uh, I think it's six foot, I think it is. Yeah, a little more than that. I'm, I'm six foot tall, so. Six foot six, maybe? I think it's six foot six. It might be close to seven feet. Yeah, yeah maybe seven foot. I can't even tell that you did that. Especially that side's better. This side's a lot. You look at it here and it's ripples. Because there's only one layer of metal, right? Oh, yeah. So it's hard. Yeah, it's not double wall. It looks perfect. Yeah, no, like, because I had to make this piece. So I took a, this piece of metal and I rounded it over a pipe. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just took raw stock and made it. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's just flat metal. Uh-huh. And I took it and I made that fold first. Because if you look along the edge, you can see that somewhere it's not perfectly straight. It. I made the wrong part. And That's... then I've got a metal breaker that bends. Right. But these here bends are at an angle a little bit. They're not square. Uh -huh. Yeah. How yeah. did you do that? Yeah. Well, body filler. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Looks perfect, actually. Yeah. And I didn't have a tailgate, so I can make the tailgate out of the little bridge here. Yeah. I cut the teeth off the... Oh, no way. Wait, you made it out of what? Fridge? fridge door. I took the fridge door. That's a fridge door. <laughs> and I rebent the metal. <laughs> and I just got like uh, deck boards inside. So I put deck boards here to make it solid. And I could sheet it both sides of it. So you got uh, an insulated tailgate, do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In case you have to push right on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's off, a forward like, you never have to push. No, no. <laughs> that's off the fence like, okay? like uh, the lock off the fence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the bumper was a wraparound bumper off something else. But I turn it around upside down and cut the ends off. Mm. That looks rad. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm not uh, very familiar with older trucks, but I would never would have known. Yeah. Like people think all kind of almost matches the front bumper, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Make yourself a spot Oh, I found an old uh, mud flap on the road. You know, like. And it has oh a, yeah, and it had up yours, and it's got that little chrome oh, cut out right, in yeah. the chrome. So I put it on there, measured, painted it. But it's at an angle on the mud flap, so it's still at an angle. Because oh. <laughs> I measured the mud flap and then I painted it. And I thought, what the heck? It's, it's at an angle, right? Eh? Yeah, it is slightly at an angle. Close enough. So I painted it over and then I did the same thing. And the second time I put it crooked again, this time I just left it. It's not that bad. I, didn't, I wouldn't no, have like even you known. You don't notice no. it, like if you, it depends. Like if you know that it's crooked, well, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's very oh, they're still like I painted it myself, so I could paint that. Uh, you know, the places that like on the back. This is all dented in. It's like speeding that all out. And there's a dent every square inch on here. Oh yeah. Dents here, but I didn't think it'd be noticeable. But it's noticeable. Eh? Like I should have done that better. I can't even. I can't tell. No. Is it you? Oh, I can tell. There is at an angle. Some there. yeah. yeah. Ah, it's character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This truck's got a story. That's cool. Yeah. I gotta get some different wheels for it maybe later. And then I had to move the fenders back and reposition. Okay, yeah. Because the fenders, they were, because for the other box, they were in the middle of the box, but now that the box, the fenders are in the wrong place, sort of. Eh? So yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Redrill them to move them back a little bit. Would a uh, regular cab ranger have worked yeah, better? Yeah, would have saved me a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, for you it'd be too straight up and down because I get sold. And the good of there, and somebody welded this on, so I okay. you gotta push it in. You got it's, tricks. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, see, like it's got tilt steering. Otherwise, the steering if it was straight, you'd be you'd have a hard time driving oh, yeah. it. Yeah, you know, uh, for me, I'm I'm shorter, so I'm okay. But. You need a longer steering column, eh? You yeah, but how do you do that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I kind of stretched it out. I wanted to make sure I could get an inspection, so I didn't unhook the steering, I didn't unhook the brakes. I, oh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. I just kept everything. All you did is just put this body on an old yeah. range. Yeah. I, I put the cab on until I could get the steering wheel, and like the, the, the yeah. speedometer could be more tilted up, and uh, uh -huh. then I should have cut the hole a little bit bigger. So, uh, yeah. yeah, just trial and error. I wonder if a full-size truck steering column would be longer and work better. Yeah, right? I don't. Know. Yeah, maybe. Dimensions are about the same, yeah, probably yeah. this way. Yeah. No, well, maybe not. But I don't know. Hard to say. And then all the wiring, there's such a maze of wires in there, you know, like. 
Yeah. It had air conditioning and I took the air conditioner off because it was just because it was so crowded, but I could have kept it, I guess. What's this? That was the windshield of the holes were there. The windshield wipers, they were separate before. Oh, that was the control? Yeah. Ah, no way. And this here is either the uh, four uh, super cab just like yours. Oh, this okay. here, the ceiling? Oh, yeah. So I just cut the piece off the of super cab like yours. Okay. Put that on. But now I'm looking for, because these two don't match, eh? Yeah. So I'm looking for another super cab or sport truck that has the same color as this. Because I want to redo these pieces. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I guess it's home time. Everyone else is leaving. Do you think they did the lines on this Ranger because they did the old Rangers like that? Like the old Ranger packages like that? All right. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, have a good night. Yeah. See ya. Ugh. All right. Well, that was a pretty good uh, car show. And now I guess tomorrow there's going to be more car stuff. Well, truck stuff. <laughs> so I guess we'll see what tomorrow brings at our brother Mike's place. Like, more truck stuff, obviously. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say this isn't that bad. I was just about to say this isn't that bad. <laughs> oh, custom. Yeah. F-150 custom. Usually custom means it's like the lowest possible trim package. It's <laughs> below an L. Or an XL, I mean. It makes it. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. But surprisingly, this one's actually got some options. It's got air tilt cruise, 4x4, off-road package, towing package. Hmm. So I'm not sure what the heck. I want my truck. I'm going to get custom ones made that say Rushi Tat. Yeah, yeah. Because I think mine says, like, what? Like this one. Yeah, so mine says XLT. Yeah. This one says XL. Yeah. So... <laughs> a rear bumper on the front there. I like that. It's super handy though. Oh, that is handy, yeah, isn't it? So handy. Yeah, I like it. Like, if this is a bush truck or something, it's it's pretty awesome. And this is a 5.8, right? Yep. Yeah. And this one, oh, this is a diesel. Yep. This is the same as this one? Uh, yeah. As your actual truck? Okay. Yep, same trans even. This one is, you're keeping for the engine and for parts? Uh, I'm going to part it out, I think. So, well, this truck needs some of the parts. I need this container, the washer fluid container on this okay. truck. I need the um, passenger rear tail light on this truck. This one's falling off. Okay. Uh, things like that. And then, yeah, part it out so the drivetrain will all be for sale. I just got to get the engine running first. All right. Take what you need because, man, this thing is rotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny, yeah, that's not, it's no good. Oh, it's got good glass, though. Yeah. And this glass is a little scratched, but. Yeah. That's better than broken. This door actually is okay other than some things. Yeah, and uh, some residents up here, spiders and whatnot. Those are all dead, though. Yeah. Nice interior uh, condition. It's only got 223,000 kilometers on it. Mm-hmm. So the dash is in pretty good shape and the seats are pretty nice. Oh, here's the headliner. I was talking to that guy at the car show about. So it's sagging some there, but like all this material is good. So maybe he could use that. Yeah, but we didn't get his number. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but I might see him. I might see him again. What was his name again? Gerard. Oh, yeah, there you go. Gerard. Yeah. Good back window. Yep, third brake light. Hopefully the drivetrain's good. It was running when you parked it. Oh, I was going to say it's a good tailgate, but not really. No. Yeah, relatively straight, but... Too much uh, stuff in the bed. Yeah, and it was down for years, too, oh. and so it filled up with water and stuff. This, but, side is not, <laughs> this side is not so good. It's so got all that lichen growing on it. Yeah. 
or whatever that stuff is. Two tone. Yeah, two tone. Nature's two tone. Oh, this one doesn't do it. Not as much, but it does, yeah. At least it closes on like the <laughs> the truck you're gonna. Yeah. Keep or are you gonna keep that truck or you're gonna? What are you gonna I'm, do with it? I don't know yet. I'm gonna get it running first. I was thinking bush truck too. Yeah, why not have two? Cause yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, I did my standard driving standard test. Not it wasn't a test, but I tried to drive uh, his Man, other bush yeah. truck. The black one. Yeah, and uh, I'm not so good at it, but he has that in the bush because you guys might remember that he goes gold mining with my brother Mike and Dakota also went the last couple times. So, uh, yeah, why not have a the trucks that you actually like be your, yeah. be your work trucks? And yeah. obviously, if you don't want to take your nicer ones out, you may as well take the ones that are rough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it would be a I, shame to wreck one. I bought it for $150, so... Hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why not? How much was this one? Uh, six hundred. Six hundred. I would have paid ten dollars for this one, but I guess because the diesel, <laughs> diesel, right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Diesel's always worth more. Yeah. They're both worth more than I paid for them, so you know. Um, the only downside to this one being a bush truck is that it's automatic, because uh, then you could drive it. So that's we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have the clutch in quite all the way, so you were riding a little bit. <laughs> you don't need to take your foot off the brake when you're starting the truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are things that seem obvious, but I, for some reason I'm just like, oh. No! Okay. 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 Okay, that was kind of okay. That was, yeah. Ah, if you want to see the whole thing, link in description. Just right through here, this one. Wow, these are like muscle man yeah. clamps. Hopefully this is a good connection and then we gotta watch out for this guy. I need to get something to insulate it with. Oh, I know. <laughs> Touch anything. I guess I could have come a little closer. Okay, no sparks yet. That's good. You don't need to start this rig? Uh, no. I'm just trying to figure out right now. I want to get the fuel pump to prime. So I just want to hear it go whirr. Right, okay. Oh, need a screwdriver for the ignition. Oh, ghetto keys. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, right, I um, I uh, hot wired this thing. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I heard ah. it. There yeah. we go. All right. The ignition on your old Ford truck ever screws up. All you gotta do is take out the two torque screws holding this thing on after you take this panel off, uh -huh. and then pull this down, and here's your ignition switch. So you, it bypasses the key and everything, the whole steering column. So. Now that's the run position. Ah! Oh, all nice. All right. Cool. How to break into these trucks by Ken. How to steal them. Or not break into, yeah. How to drive them away. Okay. So if you haven't gathered, we are obviously trying to get these trucks running so that they are usable. This one's a keeper. That one's not. But... Uh, Still want to make sure that it runs so that it can be uh, sold uh, for the for the highest amount of of dollar bills, and then uh, it's on to finding more of these junkers. <laughs> so for whatever reason, the previous owner or one of the previous owners cut a hole through the bed of the truck and then into the gas tank, presumably to siphon out the gas, maybe? Not sure exactly. So, need to plug that up so that, you know, we don't have sloshing and other issues with losing fuel while driving. Yeah. 
This is very ghetto. <laughs> well, the, the truck is ghetto. <laughs> That's true. So he's using his his truck keys to scrape away a bit of the rust so that <laughs> so that we have some uh, proper adhesion with uh, we're using a quick seal gunk of some sort and a and a metal plug might work a little easier with sandpaper we didn't bring any but that's okay also would have been better if uh, if uh, they didn't do that in the first place. Yeah. But it is what it is. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work good. All right, you can see it's gas and oil resistant. Obviously not the best thing you can do, but. This is a Band-Aid for a bush truck and not uh, something we're gonna drive on the highway. And ultimately you probably replace this fuel tank anyway, if this truck is, de is decent and runs decent. Oh, weird. That's not what I was expecting. It's kind of a clear epoxy. Yeah, but just one part. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. That's not what I was expecting at all. Comes highly recommended by the guy who sold it to you. Yes, yeah, right. Hmm. Weird. Uh oh. There's still a void right here. Yeah. Don't want anything falling in there. I guess that's what fuel filters are for. Uh, yeah. Rocks. <laughs> yeah, rocks. <laughs> What's the dry time on there? Yeah, I don't know. Good question. I might be standing here a while. My thumb on this thing. Uh, looks like uh, allow to cure one to two minutes before mating surfaces. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's in two to three minutes. Full cure, two to six hours. Uh, should I pull it back off again? And ah, it's fine. It's got air on both sides, so it'll be all right. All right. So while we're waiting for that to cure, we're gonna try to get a few other things done as well. He was still with for almost to a man. Some of them are outlaws part of the time, lawmen part of the time, gamblers, other types of opportunities. But they were the kind of men who stand up in, as an individual against great odds. Even though you look in vain perfection. Sam Houston was a recovering drunk at the time he went to Texas. But even with all that said, uh, some of them were not as bad as others, and of course, some of the worst have been most glorified. For example, everyone knows about Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Bill Bonnie in New York City. He was supposed to have killed 21 men by the time he was 21 years old. Uh, he was glorified for it. Many emotion pictures have been made about it. In reality, he was a sneaky little murderer. And in reality, he probably was involved in the death of nine or ten people. Only two of which were not outright slaughter. He did kill one man who was uh, a large man, a little kid with a uh, slender, slight teenager, and this big man was uh, on top of him, crashing uh, him, and really couldn't find him, so he shot him, killed him. And on another occasion, uh, after Billy had been involved in a couple of gang types of killings, People always put things you don't need. Figured to kill this accounted for about five people. And he may or may not have that many guns. Anyway, after these feuds had started, he was in a saloon. He played cards and 
sat down at the table and didn't know him. In a conversation, the man said, we found that Bill Bonnie had killed him. But Billy, knowing that the man didn't know who he was, told him that he was impressed by his gun and asked him if he could see it. The guy had his gun over to him. Back in those days, they only carried five cartridges in the gun, but at the hammer set on an empty chamber because the gun had to fall and hit on the hand of the hammer if there was a shell in that cartridge in that chamber, it would go off. Several men were shot, you know, through the leg or through the body and killed. So they generally carried that one chamber after. Billy looked at the gun and inspected it and spun the chamber. And when he spun the chamber, he made sure that that empty chamber was the next one up, not the one under the hammer. He had it back on the hand he put it in his pocket. Billy said, I said you're going to kill Billy the Kid, but I'm Billy the Kid. And the man went for his gun, and of course he was, he was faster than Billy, but his hammer fell out empty chamber, which gave Billy time to kill him. So I guess we can call that one self-defense. But what you find is Billy the Kid is supposed to kill 21 men one for each year of his life. Actually killed these two men plus two more men that he murdered while escaping from the Oh, we don't want to scratch the paint. <laughs> and he's participating in gang killing and probably five other people. Marty Robbins' song says, for the show, he has been idolized by a lot of people. Look, 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 look. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we got a vent issue. Okay. All right, all right, gonna have to add more slowly. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why he drilled the hole in the top of the tank. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah? Oh, man, that's ridiculous. Yeah, the filler neck needs to be replaced because the vent inside it is uh, clogged with something, who knows what, and uh, maybe rust even. And so he probably couldn't fill the tank very fast, so he drilled a hole on top of it. Crazy. Okay, the pump sounds good now. Here we go, now she's building some pressure. Might start now. There we go. That's what I wanted to hear. Ready? Moment of truth. <laughs> Almost. It's got an exhaust leak, apparently. Yeah. Let me give it some throttle here. <laughs> There we go! Oh, oh it stalls easy. Well, I wasn't giving it any throttle. The throttle was just stiff. You're definitely, yeah. But can it drive? So there's no battery in there. So we're going to jimmy rig it a bit here. But we have to insulate. Oh, you already did it. Got we're it. gonna drive around with that truck's gonna go backwards. This truck's gonna go forward <laughs> <laughs> with the booster cables between them. So <laughs> now we're gonna start the truck and then uh, 
just disconnect the cables and uh, isolated the wires here so it won't short out hopefully and uh, then try to drive it although I gotta check the trans fluid yet too okay fingers crossed did you even bring any transmission fluid uh no but I just still want to know if I'm low or not we could probably put some like old oil or something in it from that truck yeah I've got like fuel injector cleaner and stuff <laughs> hey we got some jokes Damn. yeah that's good Oil's good. Transmission oil. Well, you got a starter first. Yeah. Let's check the power steering fluid, maybe. Probably don't need that. Yeah, not really. I got arms. If you got arms, you're probably good. Uh, yeah, there might be some in there. It wasn't it's not where it's squealing, supposed to be. Yeah, but right. you also didn't try to turn, so. Yeah. Okay, let's start her up. Okay, great. As long as the throttle doesn't stick. Anymore. stick. Yeah, she's good now. Lube that up. Okay. Ready when you are. So as long as the alternator is good, this should run by itself. Yeah, okay. That'll work, I guess. Let's see. As long as the alternator is good, this should run by its yeah. There we go. Yes! She's alive! <laughs> She's dead. Turning this down a bit. It might be. There's the idler control valve. It's not working. It's stuck wide right open or something. That's actually a good way to test if your alternator is good or bad. It will run without a battery if it's good. It will turn off if it's bad. There's my brother Mike. All right, let's see. He forgot to check the transmission fluid, but he's going through the gears right now. Hey, did you want to check the transmission fluid? Uh, no. A little, a little late now, anyway. There you go. Right. Third time's a charm. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's see. She drives. He said the throttle's still a little sticky. It's driving by itself. Well, I guess I'm a bit of a good luck charm. Here he comes back. Definitely has an exhaust leak. <laughs> that thing hasn't ran since 2011. So it's nice to get it going after just a few little tweaks there. Head out on the highway. However the rest of the song goes. Just gotta drive this thing with two feet because the throttle keeps sticking so I gotta pat the thing and get it to let go. So here we are in Mexico and we're gonna go for a ride on one of these Mexican roads where you don't need insurance or anything. <laughs> also this seat is a little Oh, I've got to close the hood. Hopefully it doesn't fly open. <laughs> <laughs> it feels all right, you know? Other than it's got an exhaust leak real bad. Oh yeah, it totally does. 
quite gutless. It needs a bit of a tune-up. The throttle body's sticky. Um, I need to check the... Uh, also, the speedometer doesn't work. Also, it just shut off, so now we got to oh, no. walk, walk back. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I thought it was just the speedometer didn't work. So did I. I was like, hey, where's the throttle at? Oh, oh. man. <laughs> I guess I should have taken the time to rig the battery into it. She's dead. So you think it has a bad alternator uh, then, maybe? Do I think or what? has a bad alternator? No, it's just it should... I had to disconnect the idle air control valve to get it to not oh, idle at 2,000 right. RPM or right. whatever. So um, when going back to idle position, it sometimes isn't going to run properly. I should open the throttle screw a little bit now and then solve that problem. But anyway, at least we're not too far away. Maybe we can get Mike to come pick us up. Okay, well... I'll steer and you push. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's too hot? To? Yeah, I wouldn't, just in case. Is there any in the overflow? Not really, no. Oh, there's some. Well, yeah, I guess there's a tiny bit, yeah. Maybe we're lucky. You realize that we also forgot to check for coolant. There is brakes. <clears throat> uh, presumably there's enough transmission fluid in there. Uh, there's enough oil. It's power steering. Some. So good to go. Some? Oh, is it hard to steer? No, it's low, but it's off the dipstick. Oh. I can see it in there. So. Okay. It's not squealing. <clears throat> huh? and it's, that's right. Yep. Needs a little TLC, but she runs. It'll be a good bush truck then. Yeah. Oh, core support's not even rusted out. Yeah, no, it's not bad. That's good. You guys don't know this, but Ken always in LA and area, he always brings up core supports, beds, miscellaneous other body parts for Canadian trucks because in LA they don't rust out uh, basically at all because their weather is a lot nicer than it is here. No it's salt a, on the roads. It's a desert. Yeah, so you don't have the rust problems that you do here. And so, uh, He's always uh, bringing up uh, pieces for other people. Oh, here he is. Mike to the rescue. Never mind, that was someone else. <laughs> no, that is him. He just likes to drive backwards. Because it's cool. Got them Vin Diesel driving skills. Look out! Maybe the alternator is bad. Bummer. A few moments later. What happens when you pin it? <laughs> no, not much. And <laughs> then <laughs> nothing. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I think uh, the fuel filter needs to be changed. I haven't done that yet, so it's probably starving for fuel. Yeah, okay. That might help with the stalling issue also. Hmm. So what we've done, guys, is we've just taken a battery out of uh, his truck. It has two batteries because it's a diesel. And we've vice gripped it into this truck temporarily to see uh, how it runs. And uh, it's running. And uh, it's not stalling again. So probably a bad alternator. Has some uh, high idle issues or whatever. But uh, pretty good truck. 
I would say for a beater. Well, for $150, I mean, it's a steal, right? Yeah, it's a 4x4 four four too, which we've got to test yet, but... Uh, okay, 4x4. Four four. There's that idling issue. Yeah. Ford F-150 Custom 4x4 four four Truck Madness! Found on road day! Resurrected by Ken! Here we go! Introducing for the first time! The Bush Truck! Thank the Lord for Henry Ford! You don't want to miss the debut! <laughs> this year's Truck Madness driving event sponsored by Ushitab, Photo Deviant, and OBS Power Garage. Tickets on sale now. Get yours. What are you waiting for? So it's a keeper? Yeah, I think so. Well, we'll see. Use it for a bush truck, then uh, we'll keep it. If not, we can sell it. Hey, Cheens, what's going on? Ugh. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, there we go. There we go. So, unfortunately, we uh, we couldn't find a field nearby that we could do some real off-roading in so eh, we couldn't do that but at least we know it works now as for the f-250 diesel um, that one couldn't be fixed nope Check this food level again. By the way, guys, that right there is a star solenoid. That's the reason why my uh, <laughs> why my Mustang has two broken tail lights. Because that's how I started my car when it was in reverse, which oh, yeah. I didn't realize was in reverse. Because <laughs> I had it in park in the sh on the shifter, but the linkage was off. Whoops. So now, this means I'd have to change the IPR, but hmm. you need to be somewhere else. So should we just put the coil back and leave? Or do you want to forget your other plans the rest of this evening? Yeah, I don't care. I'll just call Armando. It's fine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. One eternity later. Curious. And curious, sir. Drop that one off at my brother Dave's house. Um, that's gonna be parted out. That's just a parts truck, so just needed to get the engine running. Did you actually end up getting the engine running on the F-250? No. The diesel? Is, uh, beyond repair, basically. It'll cost too much to fix it. Ah, oh, it'll cost too much to fix it. But you're still gonna part it out yeah. what you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, just the F-150 is good to go and you're keeping it because of uh, why? Because it's a, it's, it's a free work truck. Yeah, basically um, by the time I part out the other one and yeah, part of the other one and send the rest of it to the scrap heap, uh, I'll end up getting that truck for free basically. So. And plus some, or and then, yeah, and then they'll have cash left over too. So sweet, uh, it's a bonus. So using it as a bush truck to do mining and whatnot. Um, Potentially, yeah. We're not totally sure yet, but that's the idea. Is we're 
that, that's why I bought it. The downside is not a manual transmission. Right. But uh, given the price, you know, probably will keep it. Okay. And speaking of mining, uh, how many years ago is this from? Uh, this this material is from two years ago. We were mining on a a, a, a bench essentially that uh, was about twenty feet deep, and it paid from top to bottom. And this stuff was on the very bottom, and it's been under pressure for a whole lot of years, probably from glaciers, and it was just rock basically. And this went over the sluice box, uh, or over the, um, the shaker deck, I mean, because it didn't break down. I mean, look at that, it's rock. But in this material, we were getting some pretty good gold. And in fact, the biggest nugget that we got in this layer was 15 grams, which is like a half ounce. So okay. pretty good sized. Uh, How much is a half ounce worth right now? Uh, like a thousand bucks. <laughs> Holy shit, okay. Almost, so. Okay, so you brought some home just to... Yeah, so we, so we were curious about whether or not we were losing gold in this conglomerate stuff that wasn't breaking down. So we brought about, um, probably brought, brought about 15 gallons of, of chunks like this home, which over the last two years now, the weather, war, rain and freezing and whatnot has broken most of it down. So this is what's left that's not broken down yet. I got about five gallons there. But I ended up with uh, this full pail and half of that one. So I ended up with about eight gallons of material that is broken down enough to pan it out now. And here's a bunch of rock that I removed already. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm panning through it to see what I get. And in fact, I just got one little piece in the last pan and it's right there in the corner. How much do you think that's worth? Oh, I don't know. Pennies? I don't know. Seven dollars. <laughs> Probably not even seven dollars. No, no, not that much. One dollar. So, anyway, I'm not gonna find, you know, a one ounce nugget in this stuff, but... Wait, where is it? Uh oh. Oh, did I just have it stuck to my finger? No, there it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. It will stick to your finger, though. So... We're not gonna find, you know, thousands of dollars worth of gold in this stuff, but we might find enough to make it worth it to try to break down that kind of material in the future you know so that's oh. just what I'm so this is you're just testing exactly. the water so to speak yeah exactly. testing the dirt so to we speak we know we're losing gold for sure because we've i've been finding it we just don't know how much yet so right so if i'm done with all this i'll kind of calculate how much gold per yard we're losing and that stuff and then we'll go from there right so this is kind of like a sample then yeah and then you, okay okay so i'll pen some out here see if we get anything in it and uh, so I gotta learn how to use these kind of because they're very different uh, from a traditional pan they got a very big lip here so you can be fairly aggressive with it and, and the theory behind how this works is what because like that gold is freaking tiny those rocks are yeah. not big but they're much bigger than that so, little speck yeah, but the gold itself is uh, very heavy, so it's, if I remember the equation correctly, it's like 19 times heavier than water. And so if you give it the opportunity to sink, it will sink. So by shaking this around, moving the material, agitating it in the water, that any little speck of gold is slowly making its way down to the bottom. Mm. So, <clears throat> so, yeah, if it was a big piece, it would already be would, surely at the bottom and not go anywhere because, you know, it's so heavy. It's funny though, there's lots of yellow rocks too, so a lot of times, even when I'm panning, even though I know... You're like, oh wait! Oh, is that a nugget? Oh no, it's not a nugget. Like, it would be so nice if like, if this was a nugget. Yeah, but it's not a nugget, because I mean, it's on top. It is yellow, yeah, so you just know, so you don't, you yeah. don't... Yeah. yeah, exactly, so I, I gotta catch myself sometimes still, I'm like, is that, oh no, that's not a nugget, <laughs> it's on top. <laughs> like that? No, that's not like either. Anyway, so I could probably be doing this faster, but I'm trying to be relatively careful and uh, make sure I don't lose anything. And sometimes you come across just cool looking rocks. This is mostly just uh, iron staining and whatnot, but I don't know, you get cool patterns mm -hmm. and stuff. It's not anything special really, but I like rocks. Same here. I told uh, 
Ashley that I wanted to build a tunnel from my basement to the greenhouse. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then uh, I was thinking, so the tunnel isn't boring, you have like shelving or something in the tunnel walls. And yeah. I was like, that's where I can put my rock collection. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Because like, I don't have a big rock collection because like, where am I going to put them? But when I see a cool rock, I'm like, ah, it has to be super cool to bring home. Yeah. But, uh. Well, yeah. Did you ever see that one back there? It's got a lot of, uh, serpentine and possibly some jade in it and quartz. It's just a very unusual rock. So we kept that one and we've got some more in BC too that we yeah. saved. Mm. And uh, they're, they're pretty big though. This thing. Um, oh my goodness, it's heavy. Of course, it's dirty now too, but. There's some places where there's chunks of quartz. I believe this is all serpentine in here. Um, there may be some jade in it. This here may be jade, not too sure. And then. Uh, hopefully, it's. Oh, yeah, here. Big, big. Bunch of quartz in there. Just a gorgeous rock. We saw this thing sticking out of the ground, I think just the top part like this. Mm. And then we walked, we decided we had to have it, so we walked the excavator over to dig it out <laughs> just for this one rock. But it's, yeah, more quartz in there. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to cut it open and see how it looks inside, but also I'm not sure what to do with it. You know, if I cut it, like, what do I. What do I make out of it, you know? Do I just cut it smaller to, for people to make cabochons or, I don't know. I would I use know. it as my retaining wall because it looks so cool on the outside. All by itself? Yeah. Just the, the I like all the, the different, it's like a conglomeration of coolness. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's, unfortunately it's dirty, but there's even a big black spot. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Look at that, you know? Yeah. Mixed with some really dark greens in there. The only thing it's missing is... uh is uh like a freaking t-rex tooth <laughs> yeah that'd another, be sweet another chunk of dark material there like you know yeah just a really cool mixture metamorphic rock i forget what the uh what all the different stone types are in there but it's very oh. cool anyway i believe that is a tiny piece there but yeah very very tiny i can see it yeah right there <clears throat> oops yeah there it is little tiny fleck so i'm gonna save all this stuff because it needs to be cleaned up more there will be some oh there's an ant speaking of saving things and uh, you didn't get them what i did oh then there was another there's two okay so anyway i'm saving this stuff in here there will be some small gold in it. This is black sands. The black sands can contain microscopic gold. Microscopic. And, and this, this is this is your good... Yeah. Ignore the crud in here, but you can see the stuff in the corner. Those are yeah. all pieces of gold in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, two of them I just got before you got here, including that biggest one. There. That one I got just two pans before you got here. Oh yeah. That's actually decent compared to the other ones. Yeah. You'd call that a picker. You can actually pick it out of the pan. So that's all I've gotten so far, basically, other than the tiny stuff that will be in there, uh, out of four and a half gallons worth of panning, probably. And you think, oh, that's nothing. But if you turn that into a yard of material, you know, could be pretty significant. And then our plant could process, say, uh, right now, we, on the slow side, we're doing about 70 yards an hour. So, right, because you wouldn't be doing this by hand. No. In in, in the real yeah, exactly. uh, production or whatever. Yeah, we're using excavators, and uh, so... Um, we're so to... those huge machines you got can process uh, whatever your whole buckets of material and pull out small pieces like that oh yeah mm -hmm. as long as they're not trapped in big rocks that go right over right 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 the shaker deck and get lost yeah good in the, in the tailings pile right which is what was happening with this exactly stuff yeah. in this layer of soil or so whatever this is gold that we lost and 
there was a lot of this rock going over the side because it was so hard. So we lost many ounces of gold. Mm. So, so the, the question is, uh, is it worth it for us to figure out some way to collect this stuff off the end of the shaker deck and then crush it down and then run it again mm. to get this gold out of it? Right, okay. Yeah, totally get it. So just do about two scoops. You may even want to start with one. I'll do one and a half. There you go. Okay, start like this. <clears throat> yeah, so water. Yeah, just put it, hold it down in the water, okay. underneath the water a little bit, so that the sediment floats right out of your pan. Ah, okay, so you want yeah. It to go down a little bit, and you can shake it more vigorously than that. Yeah, I don't know how careful to be. You don't need to be careful at all because you can just shake the crap out of it. But like this is fine. Oh yeah. Yep. Right. I guess the machine is or going way harder than what my arm can do. Yeah, and like I said, the gold is heavy. It's going to go to the bottom. Of course, there is flake gold that can actually float. Oh, yeah? Yeah, especially if there's oils in the water, like you're just the oils right. on your skin even, can cause really flat, tiny pieces of gold to float on the surface. Okay. So I have a question then. Yeah. On those gold shows, when they're like running the equipment, and they're like, hey, stop the machine, I found a nugget. And they like jump out and they jump into the thing. Is that real? Uh, yeah, actually, if you're watching uh, like the Australian shows, oh, mosquitoes, the Australian shows um, where one guy's out there in the, with a metal detector while they're digging in a, in a pit, yeah, that's how you find the gold there. That's very different from how we do it. Okay. But yeah, that's... Because I'm just thinking like if that, if they're, like if the gold is supposed to be sinking down, like how would they because they aren't washing it so it's going to stay right there where it is because they're not using water right oh, okay 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 they're they're scraping off uh, layers and then they're metal detecting it you accidentally became a gold miner right you didn't mean to do it <laughs> kind of yeah i was just helping out mike and then and then i was like well might as well go for it i guess don't bother looking for anything yet wait is that no yeah, no. look. Yes, look. <laughs> no. What do you mean, no? <laughs> it's not gold. Oh, I just smushed it. That it's was sand. I think that was mica. <laughs> no, it was... It was <laughs> no, wait, there no, it is. I, I, yeah, I know. I just see what you're seeing. That's not it. That's not gold. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, oh, there's a... Oh, no, that's not gold. You know why? Because it's on top. You know why it's not gold? Because you can see it. And you're not down to the bottom of the pan yet. Yeah. It would have to be a very sizable nugget to show up in there. Yeah. But even you could hide a if it's flat enough, you could hide a one ounce nugget in there still. Like Yeah? Yeah, it's I'm telling you, it's so elusive. Dang. I, I'm hoping to to hit the hit the big one and the Hey, you know what? Beginner's luck, you never know. Now just pour the water out. And now you're doing the dip thing again. So I, I hold the pan here instead of there. It's a lot easier. There you go. Yep. They won't be able to see what you're doing. No, Is that gold? No. That's not gold? <laughs> mm, I'm not seeing anything there. Right there? That? There. Look how shiny that is. No, that's not gold. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. That is gold that that's time. That's not gold. Look how shiny that is. That's huge. <laughs> That is not gold? No. This is gold here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very tiny. It's right there. Right there. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Mine looks better, more impressive. Yes, yeah, because it's larger. But it's almost like fool's gold. It fooled you. Dang. Okay, well, what about what about that small piece right there? Where? Right there. No. Damn it. You know why? Why? Because it's not on the bottom. Yeah, no. I... <laughs> if you have gold in your pan, it's buried in that bottom corner. If you appropriately agitated that material. Yeah, but I probably didn't appropriately agitate it. 
Genuine imitation gold. Actually, I just hid my last gold bar that I made when I was at your place. Oh, yeah? Yeah, at the art walk. I was calling it. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that. Genuine. Okay, here's a spec. Imitation gold. Really? Right, right there. Right there in the corner. See the sh see how that shines? Uh-huh. That little speck by itself. Yep. That's gold. That's tiny. Are you keeping that one? Um, I mean, you may well, as well. It's going to go into the concentrates here. What if you found a piece of gold that was this big in here? That would be awesome. It's theoretically possible. We'd have to do a larger sample size too. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I can't stop laughing right now. <laughs> okay, so we did not find anything this big in there. Right, that would be insane. That would be awesome. Not the uh, worst news, though, in the end, though, right? Yeah, um, it turns out to be like 3.37 grams per yard or something. Yeah, 3.37 grams of gold per yard, basically. Um, <clears throat> which is really high. And if you process, say, 100 yards an hour... Uh, How much is a yard, approximately, to visualize? Like a cubic yard of, of dirt. Uh, I don't know, what was that? Th basically 30, three, three feet by three feet by three feet, right? Okay. I think a yard is 36 inches. Like a bucket full, maybe? Yeah, for the excavator, like a small bucket. <clears throat> um, so 3.37 times, uh, it's, let's just say $60 a gram. That'd be $202 per yard times if you did 100 yards an hour there's 20 grand an hour out of that stuff but you'd have to figure out how to collect all the chunks that didn't break down like it's mixed in with the other big rocks too right so somehow you gotta differentiate between the rocks that you don't want and the clumps of smaller material that are rock sized so once you it down. once you had a system going the potential for where you found that stuff that was too hard to process at the time, you'd be golden. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be very golden, yeah. Okay, so um, the problem is, is that it's too hard. Yeah, and part of the problem too is that you wouldn't do 100 yards an hour of that stuff because you have to take extra steps to process it now. Mm. So you slow, everything slows down. So Say you did. It seems like it's a boatload of money, but then, you know, it just never works out uh, best case scenario like that. So, but in a best case scenario, with that small sample that that you got, you'd make 20 G's an hour? Yeah. In the perfect conditions and all that stuff? So even if you made 10 grand an hour? Yeah. I even mean, if you uh, did half of that? A uh, thousand an hour is awesome. I mean, if you run 10, 10 hours, there's 10 grand a day. Like you, Right. Earlier you were telling me that you're happy with what? How much? So this is... Per Three, yard? 3.37 grams a yard. Even 0.1 grams a yard is fine. So you just have to process more of it to make up for right. the amount of gold that's in, in it, you know? So maybe at some point you'll find a way to break up the hard shit. And uh, if we get back to that spot, yeah, it's not our claim. So right. we've got to make a deal with that guy and get back there yeah maybe you can trade them some of these uh artifacts that you found <laughs> does anyone know what this is it kind of looks like a railroad spike but it's obviously way longer it's got a different shaped head and uh yeah. a different uh uh tip on it spike on it yeah it's almost like some kind of wedge or something and they've been hammering on it here like you can see it's flattened out on the side mm-hmm so they've been hammering on it somehow. I don't know why. They don't appear to have hammered on this side. They've obviously been hammering on the end and on there. I fished this out of the bottom of the lake. We went magnet fishing in the boat, mm. Chakota and I, and this was one of the things that came up. And we also found an old plate. Yeah. 
which is pretty cool. Yeah. Someone ate their lunch and supper off of this while gold mining. And then they thought it was a paper plate, so they went like that into the water. Frisbee. And then that. they went, oh no, I shouldn't have drank so much. Because <laughs> they also found uh, some bottles. Not sure. I'm sure there's someone out there who would recognize the markings on these, but there's a... Quite a few bottles that you found. Yeah, well, bottle bottoms. Bottle we bottoms, didn't yeah. We get any complete bottles, but this brown one here says MB, oh, sorry, MB and G Company uh, 17, which I assume is 1917. This darker one, I have no idea what that is, dark green here, FN with a four inside a triangle and a V underneath it. And this one says Libby McNeil... And Libby. And Libby, Canada Limited, RD... 1932. And then uh, another bottle here, bottle bottom. Or, I don't know what this is. Yeah, something EN apostrophe S Imperial. And then Mark. I don't know what any of that means. And then, uh, yeah, a bearing. Yeah, part, interracial bearing. That's going to be newer. Yeah, and probably this is newer that's too. That's newer too, I think. Yeah. So, and then a food tin. Yeah, we believe that's the top of a some kind of food container. It's either lead or something like that. So let's try uh, rubbing it in our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and they apparently also fished back then too. <laughs> With modern, yeah, they had time traveling uh, techniques. and and uh, Is that it for that one? Yeah. That's yeah. It. Anyway, yeah, some of the cool stuff we found. Yeah. Anyway, Ken is now heading back to the U.S., so you won't see him again till next year unless something else happens. Or at Christmas. But I know you guys like seeing him when he's on. Uh, if you would like to uh, check out a conversation that we had on Shop Talk in there, I'll put a link in the description. There's a lot of questions that were answered in that video. But anyway. Till next time. You see this? There's a heart. Huh, where's that from? I don't know. It's just right, it's right there. You can see the imprint. Huh. Nice. I could make, oh, I could make this the thumbnail where it says, I heart Ford. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what this is from. It's like a rubber something. Getting paper towel? Yeah, like shop, shop towel ones. Okay, sure. Oh, hey! There's a toonie. Yeah. yeah, the polar bear is all green. Really? Huh. Yeah, this has been out here for a while. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, look at this. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool again. Huh. Awesome. Okay, yeah, we got the paper towel. Finding all kinds of treasures. Yeah. Oh, look at this! This is the best one yet. Vodka cap. <laughs> <laughs>